This next story is about a U.S. Marine who survived the horrors of war only to find little peace at home. He killed himself when he could no longer bear the torment. Advocates for veterans say he is among the overlooked casualties of war. We'll take a closer look at that issue in just a minute. But first, his story from CNN's Barbara Starr. When Clay Hunt finally came home from tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan, the horror of war came home with this young Marine. He absolutely could not shake the tremors and the rigors of PTSD. I mean, he tried hard. He went to the VA. He went to the counselors. He took what he thought was the right medicine. But in late March, Clay, suffering in ways only another combat veteran can really understand, took his own life at home in Texas. Fellow Marine and best friend Jake Wood remembers how the war changed his friend. He knew that he needed help and he often was going and, and in search of that help. But you're not alone. Clay appeared in this public service announcement for troubled veterans. He worked to raise money for the wounded. But amid the devastation of the 2010 Haiti earthquake, Clay found some peace. Traveling there with Jake and a group of veterans known as Team Rubicon, they provided medical help to hundreds of the injured. Clay, in his own words. I was there to do a job to help people, and uh, I have a renewed faith in humanity. We pray to the Lord. But Clay's death will not be counted by the Pentagon as an official military suicide since he left the Marines in 2009. His mother has no doubt her son's death was a result of serving this country. In my mind, he is a casualty of war. And he died over here instead of over there. Suicides among Iraq and Afghanistan veterans have risen over the last four years. Clay's fellow veterans argue everyone must be counted. Part of Clay was killed in Iraq. Another part of him was killed in Afghanistan. And the rest of him was killed in, in Houston, Texas. Barbara Starr, CNN, Washington. So many whys attached to Clay Hunt's suicide. We do know his suicide will not be counted by the Pentagon because it happened after Hunt left the service. And we want to talk more about that and what it means with the executive director of the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, Paul Rykoff. Uh, welcome, Paul. Thank you. Good to be with you, ma'am. Um, Hunt's family says he committed suicide because of survivor's guilt. Four of his friends were killed during Hunt's service. Was, was that part of this? I think it, it probably was. Clay was a friend of mine. He was an active member of our organization. He did a lot of great work with other organizations like Team Rubicon and, and Ride to Recovery. So this is a, a tremendous tragedy to the entire veterans community and to the entire nation. I think there were a number of, of contributing factors. Um, and, and right now, we don't know, you know what it actually was about, but we know that Clay was hurt and Clay was dealing with his, with his service. And, and Clay didn't get enough help. And, and it's a real tragedy. And I hope it serves as a wake-up call. Um, you know, Clay's funeral has really sent shockwaves around this country. There's been a lot of press attention because he was such an amazing person. And to lose him is such a tremendous tragedy. And I know that Clay would want and his family would want this to serve as a wake-up call so that we don't lose other veterans to suicide. Well, that's what we're trying to do right here this morning. Uh, why doesn't the Pentagon count Hunt's death as a military suicide? I know he left the service in 2009, but his family says his depression arose from his service in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah, he's off the Pentagon's books. When you come home and you separate from the active duty military, you're no longer in the Defense Department. Now, just in February alone, there were about six, there were 16 suspected active duty Army suicides alone. It's just the Army, just active duty. They're going to see if they're confirmed. But once you leave the military, whether it's the Marine Corps, Navy, or whatever service, you go out into the civilian world. And those numbers are not counted. We don't know how many folks like Clay, Clay Hunt uh, have committed suicide. And we know anecdotally from the community that number is rising, and it's a major problem. We need national attention, well, and we need the president to get involved. This, this is a real problem for our nation right now. Well, I, I was just going to ask you, why is it important for the Pentagon to count these kinds of suicides, you know, for the family's sake? 
Well, I, I think because it, it honestly is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, 2.2 million men and women have served in Iraq and Afghanistan since 9-11, but, but only a percentage of that are still on active duty. So there are folks who came home in 2003, 2004, and they're not tracked. There's no national registry to keep track of them, not just for suicide, but for illness, uh, for even unemployment, other problems like that. So we need to have the good research so we can drive effective programs, we can drive resources, and we can tell the American public how they can help. Paul Rykoff, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate it very much.